I find running gives me a really great sense of achievement. I really enjoy training for challenges, longer distances, harder races, things like that. The first year of medical school was really intense and we had a lot to learn and a lot to do, so I really didn't get many opportunities to get out and run very much. When we had the first lockdown, um, the university moved to being online and it was suddenly a lot more flexible. I knew it was really important to try and stay active, so I started using my exercise every day to go out running. As I increased the distances that I was running, I was noticing that I'd have some chest discomfort. And I was also getting this strange sensation where I felt like I was being kicked or punched in the chest every now and again. And I thought, actually, yeah, I probably do need to go down to the local A&E department and see what they think. They said they were just going to continue to monitor me and um, through outpatient appointments and to get in touch if anything else happened. But I was absolutely fine up until early January where I started to have these um, blackout periods where I would faint momentarily. Chest pain and fainting are a sign that there could be something seriously wrong with the heart. When I was in hospital and I met Dr. Beadle, he suggested that I have an arrhythmia called atrioventricular node reentry tachycardia. And that is an arrhythmia that can sometimes be treated with ablation. And ablation is where we can change the conduction inside the heart by burning pathways inside the heart. And that can cure AVNRT. So it's an important diagnosis to make, but whether Emma would be a candidate for that is something we'd have to look at in the future. We need to really have a diagnosis from the monitor before we make any decisions. Emma complained initially of palpitations or an abnormal sensation of her heart beating, which is why we've implanted a, a cardiac monitor. This version of the device also has advanced connectivity, so it means it can connect via a smartphone app to allow information to be transferred to the computers for us to access. Remote cardiac monitoring is using digital technology to actually collect information from you, the patient, about your heart rhythm. And from that, we can then work out what's going on. So let's say that you have a funny turn. By the time you go to see your doctor, you're feeling fine and nothing can be detected. But with remote monitoring, we can actually pick up what caused the symptom, make the diagnosis and think about treatment options so much more rapidly, effectively and conveniently. This is inserted just under the skin of the chest wall and is programmed to detect when the heart either goes very slowly, a so-called bradyarrhythmia, or it can also automatically detect very fast heart rhythm, so-called tachyarrhythmias, and one of which is a supraventricular tachycardia, which is something that we feel that Emma may be suffering with. So Emma's device will start transferring data straight away. Um, we'll be able to monitor her heart rate when she's exercising, and we'll also get downloads from the device when she activates it via her phone app. Remote monitoring is going to have a huge impact, not just in cardiology, but across all fields in healthcare. Um, it means that patients can be treated remotely in their own homes and not have to visit hospitals. Most doctors would like to see healthcare being modern and using technology to help support what we're trying to achieve, which is faster, better diagnosis, um, people living with their chronic conditions in a better way, and also picking up problems more quickly so you don't just rely on the patient detecting it and having to come to the emergency room, but actually we can use technology to pick up the problems before they're major. For me, it's just a no-brainer that we should use technology sensibly. Where there's evidence that it works, we should be using it. It feels very reassuring knowing, especially on the days that I do have symptoms, that somebody is checking to see that there's nothing serious happening. I also enjoy just that feeling of being healthy and knowing that I can get up every morning and go out running and go to work and do a long day in the hospital and feel fine.